Hey guys, this is Robert Gardner with the Robert Gardner Wellness Podcast. I have Monica Garza with me today. I met Monica at the El Paso AMTA convention that happened, how long ago has it been now? Six months? April. April? Yeah. So yeah, yep. so somewhere in there, close. I um, by fast too. Yeah. Monica, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, where they can find you online. I think you said you were on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. So hi, everybody. My name is Monica Garza. I am a licensed massage therapist and uh, owner of 180 Massage Therapy here in El Paso, Texas. Uh, been part of massage for quite some time, graduated from massage school in 2004. And uh, so Massage therapy has always been my passion, and yeah, just happy to be here. Uh, I you could find me on Facebook and Instagram. You and I sound like t 2004. I think my my transcripts tell me it's 2002. So we've almost been in the industry about the same amount of time. So Austin schools of massage. <laughs> no, I, I went to school in Pennsylvania, no. but yeah. All right. Yeah. Many many. Yeah. Moons so ago. that was about two. In 04 is when yeah, I... So what I, what I think is, I think, did you two come out in 2006? Yeah, it was after, for yeah. sure. It was about 2006, 2007. Yeah. And like, the the way that social media has eaten parts of the massage industry in, in terms of education, how do you explain to a student that we went to massage school before there were YouTube tutorials? Man, it's kind of hard if you are, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, how, what's a good, how, what's, what is a good way to, to be able to describe it? I mean, you were, you had to rely on memory. <laughs> you had to look things up uh, in a slower kind of way. You had to rely a lot on other experienced people to help you out. Uh, so it's definitely different. Now the times everything is faster, the, uh, you know, the information is, you know, at a swipe or a click of a button now. So it's definitely different. Uh, I think it's been, um, it's, it, it's good. It's good because now we can relay and transfer information faster than what we used to, which is a really good thing if we're, you know, wanting to learn something new or even be able to have access to somebody across the nation. You know, we didn't really used to have that before. There was no way, Robert, that I would have known you back then if you weren't here in El Paso. You know, how would we have gotten together if it wasn't for social media or whatnot? So it's pretty neat to let them know the difference, you know. Yeah, there was a, a, a post I shared yesterday and it said something like, me, a, ch a child of the 80s, trying to explain what the 80s it was like to anybody over 30 or something, or under 30. And it was a picture of somebody it. churning, churning butter. butter. <laughs> and it's like, I was cracking up. I'm 46, man, like trying to explain what it was like when it was like, the Transformers came on as part of like Saturday morning cartoons and the TV yep. didn't run 24 hours a day. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you couldn't just click on? I'm like, dude, we had to go get tapes from a VHS store <laughs> that you got charged a fee if you didn't rewind it. Yep. And they're like, yep. what? It blows their <laughs> mind. <laughs> the, the changes in... Uh, information uh, distribution. I was not happy at one point. Um, I very much wanted to work with people hands on, um, uh, one on one. I wasn't super interested in digital technologies at all. And now I feel like I'm at the forefront. And a lot of that just had to do with exposure. Um, at some point, looking at it, it was like, okay, is the internet going to grow or is it going to get smaller, Robert? And I was like, I think it's going to grow. And I'm like, cool, so you should probably do something with that. I don't know what, you know. And it started with maybe Facebook and having a Facebook business page. But the choice to go digital, at least in a portion, it, uh, students still do this. They ask whether I do see clients. Yes, I do. They ask whether I teach in-person classes. Yes, I do but I don't do it the way everybody else does. So there's been some like, I don't understand. Like 
he's not following the rules, so to speak. And for me, I knew that due to my um, nuances, we will call them that, I have, I have very particular <laughs> yeah. nuances as a person, um, I just had to find my people. And once I hooked into those clients or those students, the business would just continue to grow and it would support me. What I see is I have students who find me, they do, they turn red. I, ha I hate social media. I hate it. And I go, okay, cool. How did you find me? And they're like, oh, I saw a video. And I'm like, because I can't teach you to build a business in a way that I don't know how to build. Like, right. if, if you're not going to use social media at all, if you're a massage therapist watching this, you're going to have to do a lot of in-person events. That's true. A lot. Yep. Like, you got to get hands on bodies, however you're going to get hands on bodies. When they go, yeah. I, don't, I don't like Instagram. I'm like, okay. I mean, the Amish don't like the internet, but they don't use it. What I right. see therapists doing is they use this device to consume instead of to produce. Sure. And when yeah. I me mention produce, they're like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, just like I told you before we started recording. The students will go, I don't understand. Why do you have a podcast? And I'm like, well, yeah. why wouldn't I have a pod? I have a business. And they're like, what? They're like, but you don't, you ready, Monica? You don't right. make money. And I'm like, listen, you're looking at it all weird. So we record a podcast. Let's say this podcast is an hour. I'm going to give this video to my now editors. Those editors are going to cut clips and they're going to take my little screen and your little screen and put them on top of each other in, in uh, portrait mode instead of landscape. And they're going to flip right. it as a Facebook reel. And then I'm going to take one of those and put it as a TikTok and then put it as a YouTube short and put it as this. Man, that's just so much work. But if people see you hundreds of thousands of times, do they think that you're an expert? Do you find more people who want your service? Yeah, I had my own unique nuances. We will call them that. I just had to get enough. <laughs> and once I started exactly. doing it, there was a feedback loop that said, if I make video, the business runs and I get clients. So I just kept doing it. Right. And talking to massage students about that, the general vibe I get is very anti-internet. It is very like squashing. Not only... Do they not like it? They actually push back against it. Push it away. Yeah. 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 There has to be some kind of fear. Maybe we're all just used to being in our session rooms in the dark or, <laughs> you know, just in our own zone. But um, I think that, you know, when we don't like something, is it because it's a little too difficult for us and we don't want to take the the time to learn it? You know, oh, that seems too much work. Uh, you know, I don't have time. And is it real? Is there some fear behind that? What is the fear of not wanting to be on camera? Maybe, you know, um, I have opinions on this. Yes. Yeah. So which, I'm which, sure there's the underlying issue, <laughs> which is part of my nuance. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I, so I think there's a lot that goes behind that. I personally am not a big fan. Uh, I'm actually a shy person. Um, so uh, when I have to speak in front or do podcasts, uh, I've done podcasts before or be on the camera or whatnot, you know, I get a little nervous. So I could see maybe a lot of people have that nervous or anxiety of being in front of a camera. Uh, maybe we're scared of the rejection or what people are going to say, you know, because of course there's a lot of critics while we're on camera, you know, you're always going to have somebody questioning, doubting, you know, putting in their two cents. And I think a lot of people also are just in fear of that rejection of not being accepted by even the community itself. And I will, I'll, I will cut through this real fast. I've done this for so long. My main hater brigade are other massage therapists. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And I'll tell yeah. students why. Why, students? Yeah. You're in my class. You've come to take this class. Why do massage therapists not like me? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, do I use a table? No. 
Do I have people get undressed? No. Do I use lots right. of oil? No. I'm told what I do is not massage. Buy yeah. massage therapists. And then I go, cool, we don't need licenses in all 50 states. <laughs> and they go, what? No, you can't. And I'm like, I told students who follow me, they're part of our subscription. This is the only post that I ever deleted from that group. Yeah. And I told yeah. someone, listen, to me, in the massage industry, the way it is currently, you are a success when you make enough video that other massage therapists hate you. Yeah. The students it's got, a form of flattery now. <laughs> the students got very angry. They were arguing with me, and I just went, you don't get it. Delete. Like, I'm not going to argue this with you. Like, right. this is how the internet works, and if you don't make enough video so that you have haters you're not drawing enough attention to your practice to draw your clients either it doesn't right. matter if if you all you did was swedish it looks like everybody's swedish you know whatever if you make enough video and draw enough attention there's going to be a massage therapist who's just like mm -hmm. it just just yeah. is i don't yeah. know how to teach what i haven't done once I got to the point where I started being controversial, my business was great. Yeah. So I don't well, know how to I don't know, know how to teach the students not to do that. Not to do that. I think a lot of it too is uh, reinventing the wheel. So, you know, we're taught to stay in in line, in parameter, in the box. You know, so when someone <laughs> right, and then there's those those of us that are like. You can't contain me. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out of that line. You know, and those are the ones that get everybody's feathers ruffled up because what are they doing? You know, everybody's wondering what is this person doing, and they're over here reinventing something that people were told to stay in that certain lane or inside that box. So when we all know that we, in, when things are being reinvented and remade, and you know it's a lot of people push back because it's something that they don't know a lot of people don't like new you know they want to stick to the old stuff and we know that in life period in order to grow and be better and learn more we got to think outside and step out and do what we feel right here would be good you know you're just reinventing it and a lot of people just don't understand it and are scared of it <laughs> I I'll put out a post and it's it's a business thing. It's not just a massage business. And as soon as I talk to a business owner and they go, well, this is the way we've always done it. I'm like, that business is doomed. Like, that's yeah. not a good, that's not a good thing to hear. Well, this is the way we've always done it. And I go, ooh, man, I, I got to be in anatomy in school. And... I was a very good student. My, my, yeah. my teachers never harassed me in massage school. Uh, I am not an early riser. There are many mornings <laughs> I came in 30 minutes to 45 minutes late to class. I grabbed a blanket, put my head down on the desk to like fall asleep for another 30 minutes because I'm exhausted. <laughs> but when I worked and paid attention, I did very good work. I learned the anatomy, learned what I needed. I never in a million years thought that I, this just whatever the whatever nuances I have, was going to yeah. try to innovate an industry. Yeah. The massage yeah. community pushes back. They're just like, this is, you're not, you're not conforming. And it's like, okay, I break the rules, but I'm not breaking the law. There you go. The difference is, I sit down and read massage law in Texas. And it doesn't yes. say what students think it says. They think it almost creates the community that they, the world they live in, the box. And I'm like, no. no. The law is written to protect certain interests, including to protect the public. And the issue is, once you take something like in the last uh, 20 years, this didn't exist when we went to massage school. Yep. Like when I 
I, I am not lying, Monica. I, a, a school contacted me here in Austin, and they're like, hey, can you come do a talk about social media for our students? And I go, great. Yeah. I go, can I film it? And they're like, absolutely not. It's a liability <laughs> issue. And I go, so you want me to come talk about social media while forbidding social media? And they're like, but yes. I can't use it. <laughs> and I'm like, why is it a liability for me to film? And they're like, well, it's, it's a liability. And I'm like... I have a lawyer. My lawyer has never once told me that there was a legal liability to me filming a conversation for me talking about social media. And it's like this slippery slope where, well, if we allow that, then people will have phones in the classroom and somebody's going to film somebody naked and it's a school. And I'm like, come on. I'm like, listen, I've had to fight school owners when I come in and pay rent. Like yeah. if you had a massage school. And I'm going to come to your school and teach a class and I'm paying rent. Like I'm giving you a percentage or paying rent or whatever. Right. And they're like, you can't film your class. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Wait, whoa, why? It's my, it's my class, right? Like whose class is this? Right. Like my students don't get naked. I haven't had anybody get naked in eight years. Yeah. And they're like. He's not following the rules. <laughs> we have, we have rules. And it's like, yeah. And I go. This is the downfall as a former philosophy student. Why? Yeah. Because nobody wants to answer that question. They just want to like skirt around and be like, well, this is how it's supposed to be. And I'm like, I don't agree. I'm going to go do my own thing over here. Yeah. 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 And I also think it has a lot to do with having to reinvent the rules or the laws of the recordings or the filming because once you do that then all these people have to feel like they have to look at the risk and rewrite everything you know even um people who want to be recorded or not that's the thing so they would instead of working on it they would just rather say no because it's easier there's no work behind saying no but if they said yes now they feel they have to look behind it and make sure on their end that they feel it's comfortable but it's really just what you're doing is reinventing the wheel in a different way that people just are not fully accepting yet, you know, and, and through all these years that you've been doing and you haven't given up, you know, you're doing what Robert wants to do. You're pushing through and everybody's starting to take notice because you're reinventing it. I you had know? a student tell me that <laughs> there were local interests in the massage community who said, she said, Robert, I think they were just waiting for you to fail. I think they were literally just waiting for you to go belly up so they could be, yeah, I told you. Yeah. And it's like, and they keep seeing my business growing and all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, maybe I should make some video. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, tw in 2023, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, what's been one of my dilemmas at my office is that, so of course I, I've been trying to do, you know, here on my social media videos and whatnot too um for the life of me i can't get my employees to do a video why and that's the first thing during the hiring session i was like we're going to be doing social media they're camera shy that's what the reasons that they give me okay are they're they are they, are they money shy no do they like money they do oh man okay so i'll, yeah. I'll do that i'll just say this real quick how many staff do you have very small right now. We're at three. Okay. Oh, uh, four, actually. You, you with get, get, all, get all of them together so we can do a Zoom chat with everybody. And I'll, I'll record okay. it and use it as training materials, but I'll give them the social media consult real quick. Like, do they that like, awesome, do they like making money? They do. They do. They I, do, but all of them are shy. And not only that, exactly like you said, they shy so <laughs> far away from it. They don't do, they don't share anything on their social medias. They don't do any videos for their own license and their own, you know, and, uh, I don't understand it either. I think it's fun. I think it's uh, teachable. You learn something. I'm a very visual person. So I think that, you know, why not? Not only that, we want to show people and clients what we do. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is them trusting coming into our office. They have no idea who we are. So they're already trusting in us to come in without even knowing who we are. And I think that social media 
is a great outlet to let the let you know potential clients and potential clients know who we are and what we offer. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, I I cut my teeth uh, years ago. A friend introduced me to Gary V online, and I was already dealing with some business stuff, but this friend knew me and he's like, man, you need to listen to this guy. This guy sounded like you, like he's, he's doing the thing you're trying to do. And I was like, who, who the hell's Gary V? And he played like a couple videos and I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. This guy lo- sounds a little different. So I think I followed him on YouTube first and then fe- videos would come through my feed. And I was like, man, this dude is like business, but he's more like hip hop in his sensibilities. His business level, his business acumen was street level. Like yeah. was, there was something yeah. about the <laughs> the raw thing that he did. And like he would curse, yeah. and I'm like, wow, yeah. he, wow, he's like a business guy who curses. But total like, business guy. Yeah, t- total. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, there was something. I just listened to Gary, and Gary got to this point, and there were a handful of videos I saw. I'm not lying to you. He said. He said this thing that as a philosophy student screwed me up. If I ever meet Gary, I'll probably cry and talk to him about this. He said, document, don't create. And I was like, document, don't create. Yeah. Like, what the hell does that mean? Like, I, yeah. I literally, I'm a philosophy student. I sat on, I knew Gary was saying something. I knew him. I, I could tell right. he's going right. somewhere, but like document, don't create. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? And then I realized what it was. I had been taking out a camera. Hey, I'm Robert Gardner. I'm going to make a YouTube video. I was creating. Yeah. He just said, turn on the cameras to show them what you do. Just record it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about creating. In fact, because my clients are closed, why don't you just turn on the camera and show them the whole session? Show them you interacting with the client. Show them how you communicate yeah. with the client. Show them how you work on chronic low back pain. Show them how you emote, how you communicate, how you move your body document just reality tv just turn on the cameras right document don't create and i went oh wow i was like that's such a weird construct and it led to eventually what became the subscription where i just recorded all the classes now i would have a conversation with an educator who owned a massage school she would sit down and tell me that massage therapists cannot learn online and I, and, and I would be like, okay. And then I'd say uh, something about the subscription. And she's like, wait, you're not just giving the students, like, you're not just giving them recordings of the whole class, are you? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, but if they're learning with online, they're not going to take your class. And I'm like, but you just said they can't learn online. <laughs> so which is it? Which one is it? Exactly. It's like. Yeah. Here's the deal, and th- I'm different in this regard. I had to make a choice. Do I have trade secrets? No, no, these are special magical techniques that Robert Gardner developed. No, no, these are my trade, you know, these, these are my intellectual property. Like, I have two trademarks, Time Massage Jam and Next Level Pain Relief. Sure, don't infringe on my trademark, but, like, do I own techniques right. or moves or sequences right. or... Right. Like, no, I'm. I've been trying to like. Aren't, aren't, bro, Robert, Robert, aren't you afraid people are going to steal it? And I'm like, oh my god, they're finally going to use what I've been trying to fucking give them for like 13 years. Please, yeah. just steal the please. shit, would you please? Like, don't infringe on my trademark. Yeah. But like, seeing a student work on a table and like use a knee in the gluteals, I'm like, oh, thank God, thank God, the industry has evolved to the point where they can use a knee. You know. The whole challenge is. I had to choose. And for me personally, what I noticed over time was I don't like defense in business. Defense is I'm going to block other people and restrict information and paywall and like the, keep, yeah. the, keep the secrets. I'm like, no, why don't you just go create faster than everybody else? The, right. the reason right. I, I went towards the internet, the feedback loop is I make a video, I get a client. Then I started teaching and recording the classes. Then I made workbooks and DVDs. Then I had an online school on Teachable. Then I had a subscription service, online CE classes, and all this other stuff. And now, 50% of my business is using four cameras to teach students interactively online inside Zoom. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if I tell people in our industry that, they're like, what? And I'm like, I'm doing an apprenticeship where the student is working with me two hours live a month. Right. And they're like, what? But you're not, you're not following the rules. And I'm like, but I don't break the law. Right. Right. Like, what's, what's the goal? Do I really want to yep. sit down and go, no, this, this is mine. <laughs> and it's, hold it, hold it's, it. It's mine. I want to be smog. <laughs> Right, it's right. <laughs> yes. Some people hold it that way. They feel that they're in control of the situation. And uh, I think the the more experienced ones that have been in the, you know, longer. And this actually goes for any industry, you know, any career that you choose. Uh, you can share you know, because w when you're sharing information that you know, you're actually doing a favor, you know, people are learning all the time. And, and when you are, when you finally acknowledge that you don't know nothing, you know, <laughs> it's when you can actually say, okay, I'm pretty smart now. I can admit I don't know nothing. So when you're learning from other people, um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to give and not hold it, you know, it's a gift that we have, share it, you know, because at the end of the day, they might learn what you're showing them, but it's still not going to be Robert Gardner, you know, it, it can still come out, it could be the same technique or, you know, the same thing, but at the end of the day, it's still different because it's a different person, The out, you know, and a lot of people do like to withhold information. And here in El Paso, we do have, I, I like that here because we say there's enough bodies for everybody, you know, and uh, personally, me and business owners here in El Paso, we refer to each other all the time. We show each other, we've given each other uh, classes, we go see each other for massages, we show each other, hey, what's that you're doing? Oh, yeah, let me show you, it's this, this, and that. You know, being an employer at my office, the first thing I want to do is share the information that I've learned with my other therapist, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good thing to do is to have and to share that, that knowledge that we got. I mean, the, the downside, like, I don't want to be on social media. Okay, cool. Like, I'm not going to force you. Then I go, how do clients find you? And it's like discussions about Groupon and, you know, Oh man, no. Just, well, I mean, you know, and it's like, what, you know, if that works for you, that's great. It's just, yeah. I remember sitting at a, a, a business, there was a business get together here in Austin and Mary Duvall is a friend and colleague of mine. She now lives in Tennessee in Nashville and Mary worked with seniors. That was her specific like niche within the massage industry. And it was Mary, uh, myself and another a young lady. And I wound up being the Gary V guy. I wound up being the social media guy <laughs> running around with this going, Oh my God, the internet, you know, and everybody's like, no, we don't like it. You know, <laughs> and Mary's population seniors were just starting to get to the internet. Yeah. It was like eight years ago. They were just starting to get to Facebook or something, you know? Yeah. And then Mary talked about business building and like doing in-person events or chair massage. And then, I, I started saying something about Facebook and the other young lady was like, Facebook is garbage. Facebook is wait. That's Facebook is a waste of time. And I went, Oh my God. And I, and I listened to her for about five minutes and I stopped and said, you built a business in the age of the yellow pages, didn't you? And she said, yep. And I said, the name of your business was triple a massage. And she's like, you're goddamn right. And I'm like, so you're trying to teach the Yellow Pages marketing to these 19-year-olds? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm glad it worked for you, but I can't in good conscience just tell these guys to just throw the internet off a cliff. <laughs> right. This is a right. part of the world. Like, when people say, I hate social media, I go, oh, so you hate the internet? And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like you hate the current state of communication? Right. And they're like, no, I hate social. And I'm like, what is social media? Like, yeah. you know, let's have a deeper conversation about this. I'm not saying right. 
I mean, if you want to take out a Yellow Pages ad, please. <laughs> but that's not the world we live in anymore. And I realized as I continued talking to people how different it was. And I, I saw a video not too long ago with Gary V. And I found it really interesting because you think um, you have sort of blinders on to other industries. I work within the massage industry, so it's kind of what I see here. You mm -hmm. think it's it's like, oh, it can't be like that in other industries, right? Like I have people who work in the tech industry, and one of my conversations with one of my tech friends is like, dude, why does everybody in the tech industry want to fight change? Like, I, this is software. But you'd think if yeah. any industry was like, let's change and change rapidly, software would be the one, and the whole business is like, no, we can't have one rogue. We have to get this whole tanker ship turned, you know, the same way. Right, right. And Gary was talking about, dude, it was like Captain Crunch. It was like breakfast cereal or something. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we run, we run ads at the Super Bowl. And Gary's like, but, <laughs> but TikTok, you know, TikTok or something. And they're right. like, yeah, yeah, we run ads at the Super Bowl. And I'm like, oh, man, it's the same. It's not just, it's not just this industry. It's all the industries. Yeah. They don't, they don't yes. know what to do with this. Like, it's not... Yes like they they haven't fully caught up yet so even when i'm told well like we can't learn online i'm like okay but your kids will <laughs> right. like let's go like i can't i can't learn online right, right. yeah so <laughs> like, yeah. like you know it does what it does the whole thing is i always uh talk to therapists and because of their uh inclinations i talk about did you ever watch the care bears as a kid yeah, I did. The Care Bear Stare? Yeah. And I'll tell them. I the, sure the, did. The, the therapists love energy stuff. I'm like, Care Bear Stare. That's what this is. <laughs> Care Bear Stare. Just go show people what you do. That's right. And talk about what you care about and like draw your following. Now, whether right. they're afraid of people's judgment or the negativity that may come with it, that's, you know, a possibility. But I can't in good conscience like cripple them before they get started. Most of the right. massage therapists I talk to in my experience, and I'm an educator, I'm teaching techniques. They don't have a technique problem. They have a business problem. They refuse. The, the, if I want to make them go to sleep after lunch, Robert's going to talk about business for 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> oh. And here's yeah, the deal. Yeah. These are the same students who complain about class fees. This class is expensive. And I was like, I made this yesterday. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're hurting yourself and you can't afford continuing education. Does anybody think yeah. there's a problem? And they're like, we don't like you. We don't like you. We don't like the fact that you, you point out the flaws and errors. And I'm like, but those are <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't everybody see this? And they're like, no, we don't like you. And it's like, okay, yeah. you can not like me, but that just shows me who I don't want to party with. <laughs> like, the internet is not going away. It's not. Like, unless there's uh. a solar flare and, and it's sort of, you know, stuff just gets fried cosmically. Otherwise, right. I don't see how it, it stops. But the, the modern massage industry, the downside is if individual massage therapists like us don't go out and educate guess who does right and i hate to say this yeah. but it's a lot of stuff massage therapists complain about on facebook groups every day and i'm like cool you realize you just gave that person that you do not like thousands upon thousands of views and then you went to his instagram and commented giving him thousands and thousands of more views essentially promoting this person yeah. Because that algorithm just wants people to see it and pay attention to it, and that's what you did. You Meanwhile, the people who actually produce educational videos, it's not entertaining enough for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> so what were you going to say? No, well, I was just going to say that uh, I think what I, the way I look at industries in a whole, not just massage therapy, is that just like technology, we are constantly evolving, okay? You have to keep up with the times because if you don't, you're going to be left 
way the heck back there. And that goes for technology, that goes for social media. And people, I think we know that when there's something new, there's a bunch of resistance. People don't want to talk about it. People don't want to do it. People are saying, you know, it's not right. You're doing it. You know, that's not the way you do things. But I think the difference between somebody who wants to innovate and, and recreate something out of what's already there, but just recreate it in a different way. Um, those are the people who end up being more successful versus the ones that want to hold on tight to to what's what has been you know those are the ones that i feel get left behind if you're not willing to evolve with your industry with the times you're gonna be left behind right now we are in the times of social media we are in the times of interaction we are in the times of people getting information this way so if we're not offering it that way People, I mean, will be left in the dust. So it's either you I mean, go with the tides, or you know, for, or you're going to drown. For therapists who are, you know, getting clients, they're they're building practices in 2023. I don't really know exactly what the flow is, but do clients like? Okay, somebody somebody in El Paso is looking for a massage therapist. Are they going to Google? Or are they going to social media? I well, social media first, even before Google now. Yes, and then I think social what, media first. What what platform is the largest? Is it Instagram? I would think uh, right now would be Instagram. Yeah, and then and and this is a thing. Like I don't spend a huge amount of time like fixating on this because trying to get the therapist to start social media profiles and build social media profiles is an inordinately large business task. But I knew that the combination of, I have a Google page or a, a website, SEO, you know, and when I say right. SEO, like I make YouTube videos, I have a blog, I, you know, I do the stuff you're supposed to do organically. It's not perfect, but it works right. well enough. Right. Um, I had a client, I tell this story all the time, um, as a male therapist at that time, I had a home-based studio. Um, I had a home uh, that I had purchased with my ex-wife. Um, and in that studio, you could tell when you looked it up on like Google Maps, it was just like a residence. And I had yeah. a converted two-car garage. And a woman came in, got a session with me, and as I was working with her on some sort of pain thing, she's like, you know, I almost didn't come see you because I was afraid you might be a serial killer. And I, I just laughed and was like, well, could be. I mean, I garden organically. I could compost you in the backyard. You know, I could get you super relaxed, you know, you know Dexter style or something. And then <laughs> I was like, what? You know, because you know I have a home studio. You could see it from the Google map. Um, what, what got you like over the hump? And she's like, oh, I watched like 10 of your YouTube videos and it was obvious you were a consummate professional. And I heard a cash register, ching, 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 and I go, yep. money came yep. in. Yep. It's like she deemed it. Uh, so do you have children, by the way? I do. Yeah. Or, or, do they make their own YouTube videos? Uh, my nine-year-old has been begging for a YouTube <laughs> channel for two years, Okay, Robert. Now, this is the world that we live in. Yeah. And it's like, and it's your, it's your choice. It's your kid. Like that's a different, different thing. I'm like right. a nine year old wants to start a YouTube channel. The nine year old at a certain point was like, I want to be a YouTuber, uh, a, a significant oh. class. I want to be a YouTuber, right? Yeah. And then I've got the other side of the spectrum where they eschew social media altogether. I'm kind of in the middle. I just went generally play with this stuff and see see what comes out. And generally, what happened was I got more exposure more trust and people deemed me more professional because I was on a platform that your nine year old wants to have a channel on. Yeah. Like it, it totally, <laughs> it totally blew me away because there's no credentialing for a YouTube channel. Exactly. Like yep. it's, I set up a Gmail account yep. and that YouTube channel is connected to that email address and that's it. Like it's just, 
<laughs> like chaos, right? Like it's, it just feels yeah. like Pandora's box, but yeah, exactly. It, it did, it did open and create business. And to this day, like I said, I, it's 2023, I'll teach an in-person class. The students generally hate when they talk about business and they're like, I hate social media. They're all turning red and foaming at the mouth and, you know, and I go, cool. How did, and I'll do this. There's 10 students in this class. How did each of you find me? And they're like, oh, God damn it. Mm-hmm. I saw a video. Yeah. I'm like, oh, where'd you see the video? And she's like, God damn it. <laughs> what, then, then you had that free workbook. And I'm like, the free workbook is digital. The free workbook yeah. was like, I had people tell me that was the dumbest thing I ever did. And I'm like, there's like 5,000 people actively on my email list yeah. right now because yeah. of that free workbook I started giving yeah. away 13 years ago. There's just no other way around it. The thing is, is that you've taken something, made it your own, and and it's it's uh, it's successful. And a lot of people still can't comprehend because, like I said, we put those boundaries within ourselves. <laughs> Imagine if we didn't have fear. Imagine if we didn't put boundaries on ourselves. Don't you think a lot of us more massage therapists would be more uh, reinventing our industry, being out there, being more? It's. I just think if we didn't restrict ourselves and we're more like, hey, let's let's see how we could do this on our own and reinvent it and see what people you know do about it. I think that we would be reinventing a lot of stuff in massage therapy, there would be a lot more different things to Ther- offer. Massage therapists, what percentage yes. want to work completely for themselves in private practice? Uh, everybody, 90%. <laughs> everybody wants to start a business. No, no. They, they want the comfort of being an employee while they complain about the business they work for. Yes. What what percentage of massage therapists want to be completely in control, like run their practice 100% on their own of the whole industry? Yeah. 100% of massage therapists, what percentage work completely for themselves? Mm, we're not that big. I'd say less than 10%. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah. when, I, when I would teach classes, the students, they would like what I was teaching on a mat. And they would do this. They'd go, when are you going to open a place? And I go, huh? And they're like, when are you going to open a place that does yeah. this? And I go, why would I do that? Yeah. And like, well, I want a job. And I'm like, okay, I want 60%. Aww. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. I'm like, listen, this is Austin, <laughs> Texas. You want me. So one, you don't even like my personality to begin with. You think I have an attitude. Do you have any idea how much drugs I would have to do to manage massage therapists? Do you do I want to have that phone call with an awesome massage therapist that's like, hey, listen, I need you to put the bong down and get to clap, get to work. Like there's somebody here waiting on you for a massage that you're supposed to deliver. You want me? Like you think I'm an asshole as a teacher. And this is just like two, three days. Can you imagine working with me daily? Do you yeah, really yeah. want to deal with whatever you're going to have to deal with? If like, Listen, <laughs> I'm teaching you techniques that you can use and you can run your own practice and keep 100%. And they're like, oh, there you go. But that's like hard work. And I go, so listen, keep yep. a job where you're an employee and just bitch. Just do what everybody else in America does and complain about how you don't like the boss. Well, I don't like my boss either. And I look at him every morning in the mirror and go, go make the world a better place. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're going to have to have another podcast as far as uh, employing other massage therapists. Oh, happy you know, to. it's, yeah. it is, uh, I employ, is it, is it, I employ a uh, massage therapist, not I see employ, right? How, 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 uh, how difficult is it, Monica? No, it's <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Man, it's been, you know, a few things that we've been talking about today in this podcast is literally <laughs> reminding me of certain situations I li- literally just recently have been going through, you know, uh, crazy, crazy stuff in regards to reinventing the wheel. There's things that I'm doing here that I think people are questioning. 
Um, I've gotten some pushback on what I'm doing. Uh, not only that, uh, I thought that as, and I love our community, all of us massage therapists are awesome, but employing each other has been <laughs> somewhat of a, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for better or worse, I, I chose a different path. And I could yeah. go into great detail about the options available to educators or massage therapists, but the facilities I worked in would not allow me to continue growing. They kept putting blockages up where you can't and you can't and you can't. And I was never told, Robert, you don't do a very good massage. No, we had comment cards from clients that were like, this yeah. dude gives the best goddamn massage I've ever had. The other massage therapist didn't like me. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I, I wasn't aware that massage was a group sport. Like, what what is what is this? Like, <laughs> this isn't football. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Here or in and years ago, here at Salon London, uh, I love saying their name because they're long since I have business <laughs> in Baton Rouge. Here at Salon London, we're trying to build a team. And sometimes the team works and sometimes it doesn't. So we're gonna have to let you go. That those businesses, I hate to say this, all those businesses that didn't listen to me over the years, they're gone. Yeah. yeah. My business is still here cranking and I feel yeah. like a burr in the ass of the massage industry. They're just yeah. like, yeah. how is this yeah. guy doing this successfully? And I'm like, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> you just read that right there. It's it like, might help you. Dude, you I've, know? I've told students in class, I'm like, listen, I have been told by people in our industry that I'm a white colonizer, misogynist, mansplaining, ass hat, <laughs> cultural appropriator. I have been called names. Yeah. And I'm yeah. a success. Imagine what you can do as a nice person with a good attitude. Exactly. Exactly. It goes and a, a long and, way. And the students will crack up laughing. And I go, yep. listen, you got to find your clients. I, yeah. it wasn't so much like, um, I probably would have been very happy being an employee if I had been allowed to freely continue developing the art and working on clients the way that I thought was the the best way. Like the, right. the client-centered practice. I mean, I over the years, really for me, I'm just an honest mechanic. That's what I tell people. My clients yeah. know that I will never just try to extract money from them just to dole out another session. I'm like, yes, hold on, but do, do you need it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I like working with you, but do you need it? Right. Like yeah. I have clients yeah. and this still happens. I don't see a ton of clients, but I do see new clients. The client will come in and this happened recently. Um, I call her Vidya. Uh, Vidya came in at an eight. She had plantar fasciitis and carpal tunnel and just a whole laundry. I'm like, oh, okay, cool uh, video. We're going to have to talk about this and see what's going on. After the second session, she went from an eight to a two. Mm -hmm. She stands yeah. up and goes, you mean I don't need surgery? And I'm like, video, no. I, I don't diagnose or treat conditions, <laughs> but if, if the bulk of your symptoms go away, it Are tells me that at least a large portion of it seems to be some sort of yeah. myofascial pain, some sort of soft tissue thing. That, right. that we've been able to address. You haven't told me anything that a doctor needs to like cut on, you know, like, I mean, yeah. always listen to your doctors. I don't diagnose a treat, exactly. but it's like, the thing is you can tell that the clients had a deeper level of trust because of the way I was interacting with them where I go, listen, we're going to try to fix your car. And I'm going to tell you, listen, we changed the oil. We did this today. The spark plugs need to be changed, but this fan around the radiator, some sort of cooling fan. Uh, I think this is getting old. I, I want to see you yep. again in about three months so I can work on this. That thing, yep. that that tone completely changed the way clients interacted with me. They were almost like, they're like, three months? No, can I just bring it in every month? And I'm like, yep. sure. I mean, I you yes. know, maintenance is great, but... I don't want to make it feel like a revolving door where I've, exactly. seen, I've, I've seen chiropractors do this. Oh, you have a scoliosis. You're going to need an adjustment once a week, at least for a year to, to address this. I don't like that sort of thing personally. 
Um, right, right. I don't, I don't like that, that tone. All I did I was, I, I just knew this. Like I felt like House MD, horrible, uh, inconsiderate, rude, had a drug problem, wasn't very good socially, but he was necessary. <laughs> And I was like, he took away what I wanted him to take <laughs> away. That's what counts. <laughs> and I go, that's it. I'm house. I had no idea. It was like people in pain would find me and just go, dude. Exactly. This is the thing. It's, well, yeah. To this day, the, the students go, I don't understand. This isn't massage. And the clients would go, dude, this shit is amazing. Why aren't massage therapists doing yeah, this? And I'm like, exactly. I'm, I'm it's teaching. true. Yeah. That's the thing when we can offer either the clients want something from us or they want us to take away something from them, which is usually the pain, right? They want, you know, either it's an actual service that they want, whether it be they're buying an actual physical, you know, whatever, you know, and then, or we have something that they want us to take away, which is normally that pain. Now, exactly how you said with my clients, it's not like, oh, come in every week and it's more like, I'm going to see you this time. Let's go over what's what you're feeling, what your symptoms are. Let's come up with a plan together. And then after the session, we're going to go ahead back, talk about what we did, how you're feeling. And I, and I even put hold myself accountable because as before they leave, I say, I want you to notice the difference. So before walking in this door to leaving this door, what has changed? And, and I said, and we're going to monitor that. That's the way I want to work. So next time I see you, we're going to readjust what I'm doing. If I have to, if it's working, we'll do the same. You know, it's putting myself accountable as wanting to help them, not just, oh, yeah, come every week. And then just trying to tease them in a sense where like, I'll give a little bit. And then that way they could continue coming back. No way. If I could help you in one session, I'll do it, you know, yeah. and uh for me, it's holding even myself accountable with my clients. And that's how I gain their trust, Robert, because they're thinking, wow, she's actually telling me to take notice of her work to see if it's actually working. And and because if they say, you know what, that didn't really work. I still feel it. Hey, that lets me know. Get back to what you need to do. Sit back and analyze their intake form and start problem solving. Okay, now let me go back and see what other areas I didn't touch on. And let's see if that works. And with that, Robert, they appreciate it and they trust me because now I'm putting myself accountable for my work. And to them, that's like, okay, she's really here to help me. So that's really, uh, it's been great for me with my clients. Yeah. yeah. I've had a, a distinct, I was asking this question recently because I'm doing very well with clients and very well with one-on-one -on -one training, even online. Yeah. So an apprentice comes into my studio, we work together one-on-one, -on -one, great. We're working together one-on-one -on -one online, great. Once I get to group classes and once I get to group online training, it starts to like diminish a bit and I can't, yeah. and I can't figure out why. I can't figure out if there's something different in like the way I teach or deliver stuff or like I can't can't quite figure out what the d dynamic is because the clients in particular, they have a deep seated emotional resonance. These people, they would go to battle for me. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. like, no, you don't mess with Robert. I love Robert. But the students, <laughs> if you ask, I had some students come in, they came in for a little group training here in Austin. And they sat in my studio and I said, hey, what did you guys think of me when you saw me in video? And this student was like, I thought you were a prick. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. All right. You made it over the hump. What happened? And she's like, the, 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 the conference in El Paso, like there was something about you teaching with Kristen that like the tone was different. And I like after that class, I wanted to be your friend. Yes. Yeah. And I'm yeah. still digging for information like, okay, what, what do I say that makes me a prick, apparently? And then <laughs> how is that different than every other thousand videos that are on YouTube? You don't think it's just intimidation? I mean, people are, are looking up looking up to you. I ask, and maybe well, they're just intimidated by well, you. The, the difference you know? is, and, and, and there's some discussion here, um, I, 
asked her about it. I was like, why did you think I was... She's like, you have very strong opinions and you don't make any facial expressions. <laughs> and I went, what? <laughs> what do you mean I don't make facial express? Like, what? Like, what? Yeah. Now, I talked to even my mother. I'm 46. I talked to my mother about this. And she's like, baby, she's like, people have gotten mad at me my whole life for that. Like, I don't know what that is. Like, we're, I was yeah. having a conversation. I'm 46 years old. My mother now is, like, diagnosing me with Asperger's. She's like, you got the Asperger's, baby. You you know, or whatever. And I'm like, oh, God. Am, am, am I on the autism spectrum? I think that when I talk to Kristen about it, so Kristen is teaching with me, and the students love Kristen. She, yeah. she taught a class at one She's point. She's awesome. And then, She's awesome. And then, see, like even you, like I don't, I don't know. People just have a positive response to Kristen, and I go, Kristen, why do they have such a positive response to you? And she's like, Why? Well, I don't know. And I'm like, You're a woman. That's one. <laughs> they don't. The industry is 85 percent women, Kristen. They don't like men. Yeah. How do they? How yeah. do they feel about white men telling them how it should be? You're a misogynist. You're a mansplaining asshat. And it's like, now Kristen taught a class, and I'm there filming. I'm, yeah. there, I'm there, you know, helping or whatever, but I'm filming. Yeah, yeah. A student walks up to Kristen and she's like, I'm so glad a woman is finally teaching this class. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, my God. I was like, dude, is it that gendered? Like, have I just not, and I'm, I'm a man, so I don't think about it. Like, I just deliver information. The difference right. is I also deliver information in a very matter of fact, like, it's like this. Oh, you don't agree? Okay, well, I think maybe as a former philosophy student, you need to sit down and think about it a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and keep teaching what I've been teaching. And they're like, how dare you? And I'm like, uh, how dare you not use logic? You should try it sometime. It's really beneficial to the species, I promise. That sort of tone of like, not only confidence, but of like condescension is like, that hey, pisses them off. Yeah. I have a question for you with that being said. Yeah. With the majority of your pushback and people who, you know, uh, don't agree with what you do, what is the age? Are they the younger group? Or are they the older group? The generation, I think, might like... I, I So, I think it's a little bit older. I think it's skewed that direction. I figured that. I mean, you know, I, that's why I asked because I figured your answer would be that. Um, I think that the younger generation, um, and I, I'm, you know, I'm not part of that younger generation anymore. So I also have to learn to evolve, like I was telling you, to keep up with the times. Um, but I think that uh, when we're set in our ways, and it's not just in our industry, it's just as human people, we get set in our ways and we don't like change. So, you know, that's why I asked about that age, because uh, I think as the older we get, the more set in our ways we are and we don't want people to come around and stir it up and, and have to make us have to change because now we have to keep up with the times. And if you're, re you know, you're doing, you're changing the industry. If I don't want to be left behind, guess what I got to do? Keep up. <laughs> and that means more work for me. And yeah. some of us are just happy and content in our own spots. Well, you know? there's a lot of noise, and to give you an idea, um, I'll talk about this regularly. Uh, the students will, the murmur online is like, well, we can't learn online. And I, I've taken that to heart. I've heard that so much for so, so many years. So many. Yeah, We can't learn online. So how do I explain how that 50% of my revenue comes from teaching people online? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a totally bipolar. Who do you listen to? And I'm like, quit losing, quit listening to losers on the internet and just go keep doing what you're doing. The body work itself is weird enough. It's Matt Bay's clothes on. Just that. Like, listen, it's like walking into an, into an industry that is completely table based. 99% right. of massage therapists work on a table. And I go, yeah, yeah, fuck this. Let's start over. Yeah. And they're like, no, yeah. you can't. And I'm like, yes, I can. Watch. Yeah. Now, add to that massive digital distribution. There is a thousand hours of recordings in my subscribers vault. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've recorded every class almost since 2017. And people are like, no, you can't. And I'm like, 
I have a lawyer. Watch me. Yeah. Why yeah. would I not want to give it to the people who want it? Yeah. The massage industry is the one pushing back because they're like, we don't want to change. And I'm like, listen, Stretch Lab and Stretch Zone don't give two shits about your lack of desire to change. Exactly. exactly. And they're like, no, they can't. And I'm like, they can't what? And they're like, yeah. they're, they're manipulating soft tissue. And I'm like, well, apparently if you don't call it massage, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like we, can sit, we can sit and argue this. We can debate it. But right. in the end, I was broke and I was starting to have problems with my hands because of doing table-based work. All I did was take work from Southeast Asia and adapt it to an American marketplace. Yeah. That's yeah. all. I don't, I don't feel like yes. I created anything. I might have assembled it in a new way and then trademarked the that brand name. But in the end, it was like, was it beneficial to me? Yes. Was it beneficial to clients? Yes. Everybody loved it. I have taught a class, uh, will we'll remain nameless. I will not say who. And basically, um, they, they called me and said, hey, we want a class. I can go in and teach. My table tie class is two days. And they're like, no, we only want six hours. And I'm like, good God. <laughs> Here we go. Like, not only do they yeah. want to control what I'm teaching, they want me to deliver it in the time frame. Okay, in their wh time what, frame. Whatever, whatever. So we yeah. set it up, and I go in, and I'm setting up cameras. And the guy's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, setting up cameras to film class. And he's like, but we don't allow. And I'm like, you do now. Yeah. In other words, I start to push back, and they don't like it. They're yeah. like, no, you should yeah. do... You're, it's like you're an employee. You should do as you're told. And I'm like, ah, I don't do real well with do as you're told. <laughs> so I work yeah. with the students on a table for six hours. The students are doing goddamn cartwheels because they're like, this shit is, oh my God. <laughs> Dude, awesome. This shit is amazing. I, I'm not even yeah. using my hands. Yeah. Now yeah. I can yeah. tell the boss doesn't like it. He's already walked out. The student, <laughs> The students love it. A week or two later, my contact at that facility, I, I meet with him and he's like, there's a problem, man. The boss doesn't like it. And I go, hold on. Hold on. The students were doing cartwheels, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, are you using the work that I teach and helping people out of chronic pain rapidly? And he's like, absolutely. I'm like, all right. Are you doing the work that I teach and saving your body? And he's like, absolutely. I'm like, are you doing the work that I teach at that facility? You have a higher rebook rate and the clients are tipping more? And he's like, absolutely. And I'm like, the problem is your boss. Tell him to let him teach whatever's fucking ineffective. Yeah. And that was yeah. the end of the meeting. And they're like, God damn, bro. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to sit around and teach ineffective work to try to yeah. placate somebody because they need to live in a goddamn box that they think yeah. is massage. Yeah. Like, I fucking help people in chronic pain who yeah. look at me and go, I don't understand. You mean I don't need a surgery? And I'm like, dude, the, the, the crux of like hitting the healthcare system when people aren't getting help. Yeah. And it's like, I, I'm not dis diminishing doctors or physical therapists. Right. And I certainly don't know all of them, but I see people daily that are afraid yes. they're going to have to have surgeries or be on medications yes. or, you know, other we stuff. We know the alternatives. Ugh, if, if, if we know the alternatives, they don't. And why do you think uh, all of these back surgeries and all, that's all they get. Oh, right away. Back surgery, back surgery for you, ba back surgery for everybody. And we're like, not necessarily. So that's what the people are led to believe. That's the only way he's going to fix things. And we know that even sometimes it makes it worse. These surgeries, you know, we've had those clients, right? I got the back surgery. I got the neck surgery. I'm in, I'm in more pain now. And, uh, so like you said, we're not discrediting anything that the doctors are suggesting. Oh, or dude, what. I, the, I had to you go know, read, I had to go read massage law the other day and I was trying to figure out, um, the issues around diagnose and treat. Right. Because I had a class recently and the student was like, no, it, it sounds like you're diagnosing and treating conditions. And I go, uh, what if their symptoms could go away? And they're like, no, I can't, I, I, I can only do massage. And I go, cool. Could you run a Facebook ad that says non-surgical carpal tunnel pain management? What?
<laughs> no, no, I can only do I can only do massage. And I go, that is what you're doing. It's non-surgical carpal tunnel pain management. Yeah. You can't you can't have a pain management service and they're like they're starting to back up because they realize they don't know what the law says and I'm like, "Cool. So yeah. while you don't know what the law says and what you're allowed to do legally, Stretch Lab is promoting their stretch service for people with sciatica." <laughs> no license necessary. It's a two-day training. Yay. Yay. Yeah. And the deal yeah. is I have to sit down and not only read the law, then I have a lawyer. I have to go to my exactly. lawyer and go, all right, you charge $400 an hour. I want you to explain to me. And my lawyer's told me many times, he's like, Robert, I don't, I'm not a business coach. I don't give you business advice. My job right. is to keep you out of prison. Thank you exactly. so much for contacting me before <laughs> you yes, go, before you I go have to do all this work. <laughs> it's like, thank you so much that I'm not having to go to court proceedings to try to defend yeah. you because yeah. you did something before you discuss it with me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, in my world, an ounce of prevention is a big deal. It's uh, being proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. That's the thing. The, you the, know, the, the challenge, the challenge I see is, is vast. Like it really just it stretches across the, the landscape and trying to have conversations with students about it they're operating in a very safe culturally sanctioned box that i broke down years ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i go okay am i doing anything you know like in other words is there anything that i'm doing that goes outside the scope and practice of massage no right right it's just soft tissue the right. problem is the way I decided to address it that I decided was exactly. more effective biomechanically yep. otherwise is like, God damn it, this guy won't go away. He's like a fucking gnat. Like he just, yeah. he keeps working on a mat. Well, <laughs> this, this facility, they're like, yeah, okay, what you do is effective, but it's not what we do here. And I go, cool, you guys can keep doing ineffective body work. I'm going to go help some Exactly. People. Yeah. And it's like now that. remember, Robert, it, if it wasn't you, it was gonna be somebody else. You just you you know, you grasped it sooner than we anybody else. But if it wasn't Robert Gardner doing all of this, somebody else would have been right behind you doing the same thing anyways. You know what I mean? In the sense where I think people are starting to catch on. And if you didn't start on all of this where you you know how you felt it, like this is something I could really do you know, somebody else would have been probably thinking, having the same idea as you and, you know, but you're the one that started it, you know, giving people the idea, making people more comfortable to be on the camera, you know, thinking outside of the box. I don't, I don't burn bridges. When the student told me, I thought you were a prick. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Like, 2,000 2, videos of Care Bear Stare, and I'm a prick. I'm like, wow, interesting. Like, what did I say that... And it's like, well, you have a difference of opinion. You talk very confidently and do massage therapists on the whole. I work with them daily in classes. Are they confident? Not really. Not... So I, I'll meet somebody at a party and they have, I have carpal tunnel syndrome. And I'm like, oh, were you diagnosed by a doctor? And they're like, no, but I have hand pain. I'm like, I might be able to make the bulk of that go away in one session. Yeah. And then I just yeah. wander off. When a massage therapist hears that, they're like, no, you can't. And I'm like, just did. Try me. <laughs> just did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, well, so video, right? I filmed yeah. the stuff. I filmed yeah. the stuff. There was a Dallas Tillman is a, a client I work with, and Dallas. Uh, I long story short, uh, Dallas had horrible elbow pain. She was at an eight on a pain scale. She was literally talking to me about she was afraid she was going to get divorced because the pain was so bad and it was interrupting her life and stuff. Yeah. So I had Dallas come in for a series of sessions. We got to about session five, and all of these sessions are recorded. I have recordings of every session I've done with her in full right. glory. The thing is, right. it's totally boring on camera. I mean, it's not bad footage. It's just like what's exciting about, hey, right. let, let me apply pressure here. <laughs> yeah, It's yeah. not. 
the fifth session, she came in and laid down and she's like, can we work on my hips? And I'm like, cool. Yeah. And I work on her hips and I go, hey, what's up with your arm? And she's like, oh, it doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm teaching this as fast as I can using the cameras. Uh, the new curriculum, some of it was just released and a student the other day was like, I don't get it. And I'm like, did you do the sequence? Well, yeah. I'm like, how did the client with upper back and neck pain respond? They're like, oh, they loved it. And I'm like, yeah, you're good. <laughs> but, but isn't that what we're trying to do? Like, in other words, they're going, is this it? And I'm like, is this it? Dude, listen, I wrote, oh 700, Look at your results. I wrote 700 pages of sequence manuals and nine DVDs of core content. There's a thousand hours in the subscribers vault. Do you yeah. think within any stretch of the imagination that I'm done? Like, no, right. I have to go right. and overwhelm them again and go yeah. upper back and neck, table and mat, lower back and hips, table and mat, elbow pain, table and mat, plantar fasciitis, ankle pain, table and mat. And yeah. they're like, oh, and here's what happens. I will be satisfied once I've broken it down to those sequences. And they go, this is overwhelming. And I go, welcome. This is called being a body worker who's addressing the whole body. It's like exactly. they want stuff broken down. You talked about this. We're making a body map. And long story short, hopefully, oh, my hope is the next month, the body map will go inside the vault. There's a body. You click nice. on the shoulder and it's like, okay, shoulder pain. All right, deltoid. And they click on the deltoid, table, mat, suspension, self-care, one muscle. Because wow. that's, what, that's what they want. I, I, exactly. I, I can give them a four or five step sequence. And they're like, this is it? And I'm like, did you do it? Because I'm not going to, you can't go around this anymore. You can't be like, well, right. the, the workbook sequences are too long. The time massage, they're too long. It's like, did you do that? For, like, no. If they have upper back and neck pain and you haven't done the basic sequence, get back to me after you do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm trying to break it down, but you guys are like, no, but the path of mastery might take a lifetime. <laughs> yes, the path of mastery might take a lifetime. Sorry. There's no way of getting around yep. this. Like, I know yep. it because I did it. Exactly. I know low back pain because I've worked on thousands of clients on a table and yep. on a mat. It's like yeah. I'm confident in the capacity that the, the mat can transform the massage industry because I've done it. I've done it in my right. own practice. I've seen right. Kristen. I love Kristen to death. Kristen, uh, t it took her two years, okay, to get off of the table. She, yeah. was, tra she yeah. was training with me yeah. once a week in person, one on one. It took her two years to get off the table. Now, three years later, she's totally mat based. She doesn't yeah. want to teach table work at all. At all. And I'm like, Kristen, 99% of our industry is table based. You were telling, and she's like, it's fucking, in, it's ineffective. It's fucking bullshit. And I'm like, cool. Can you make a video and say, hey, I'm Kristen Lumsden. I'm a boss bay yep. bad bitch here in Austin, Texas. Yep. What you're doing on a table is completely ineffective. And I want to watch the hate mail pour in. No, not only that, though, you are going to get some heads to turn on and be like, I want to see what she's talking about, too, though. <laughs> but there's no, and this is it. It doesn't look prestigious. Right. There's nothing prestigious about releasing YouTube videos. There has to be something like impressive about it visually. I recorded those sessions with Dallas. There's nothing impressive about it. Right. I don't understand. Right. He just works on a mat. Like, I don't, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, the future. Right. And it's like, yeah. long term, we'll continue to craft it. But when Kristen doesn't want to teach on a table, I'm like, Kristen, you realize that the new sequence is a table and mat, right? <laughs> and then she's like, but why are you? And I'm like, Kristen, they're making this distinction between these two platforms. Right. right. It's the same damn thing. I literally, I, I did this in the vault. I didn't release it as table. I released it as sky mat. <laughs> no, it's not a table. It's a sky mat. The students mat. are in a class and they're like, what the fuck is a sky mat? And I'm like, it's a mat in the sky. <laughs> it's just a very small mat in the sky. Because like they're, they're making this duality that's preventing them from picking up information. The other thing yeah. is, and I'm biased about this, if you can't use the work I'm teaching in any given environment, you don't understand what I'm teaching. 
Yeah. If, if somebody throws me on a chair or a massage chair, I just do the same thing in that environment. If you throw me on a mat or a table, I do the same thing in that environment. I told people, right. I'm like, listen, the thing you guys don't understand about next level pain relief is you think I'm done. It's like, you could give me floaties right now and we'll go in a warm saline pool, Monica. And now you've got the aquatic next level pain relief. Right. And there like, you go. What? And yes, I'm like, sir. you guys think I'm done. I'm not done. You're not, you're, 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 you're your vision is too myopic. It's too, exactly. There's, exactly. there's more stuff yeah. that can be done. I'm trying to, you know, craft a brand. Yeah. I yeah. don't get any feedback from the clients that's like, I don't like this. This is ineffective. Right. That's not what I hear. Right. The clients right. every time are just like, dude, oh my God, like, this actually solves the problem. Why are massage therapists not doing this? And I'm like, because it's not what they're taught in school. Exactly. It's different. Yeah. That's enough. Just make yep. it mat just make it mat based. Don't even worry about the rest. This is crazy. It's on a mat. We should we should look at school as a starting point. Instead, people look at it as, as a starting and staying point. School legally does have to have his restrictions right because uh you're dealing with people who know nothing about massage therapy so of course there has to be some set of restriction so the mind can comprehend you know we kind of have to be very basic you know at first so that way we could actually even try to comprehend what we're being taught then you know as our experience and our learning and as our time goes we aren't taught to start thinking of thinking out of the box. We are just taught to think within those parameters and then you're off to start your career. Um, so I think the way we start, which is being a student, being in school, we have those little parameters that we got to follow through just so the base, just so the mind could understand the basic information. But then as we grow, as we are hungry to learn more, as we're hungry to to even, you know, you said you started the mat for your own specific reasons because you were already hurting. Little did you know that this was actually something that was even beyond you. It's now blown into something where you're like, this is something that oh, can yeah. actually be used nah, man, around the, students, the world. And I love I love my students online. They yeah. Are, I'm, I'm, I'm this close. We're not there yet, but I'm this close where it's like, okay, we have a facility. Now go teach the yoga therapy. What's that? <laughs> and I go, uh, it's where I take eight people in chronic pain and work on them all at the same time, showing them how to work on themselves, doing hands on assist, teaching them breathing exercises to release old standing, uh, postural strain patterns. And they're like, wait, what? And I go, yeah, you're going to work on eight people at once. And they're like, no, no, but do, do I need a yoga certification? And I'm like, what is yoga? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. no, God, he keeps fucking changing it. Oh my God, what is he doing? And I'm like, philosopher over here, evolving and helping people, evolving and helping people. I don't want all of you as students. I don't. I'm busy. Exactly. I, I want to find the yep. ones who want to keep going and we keep expanding. Um, yeah. I think we're going to finish up here and then I'd love to do another podcast with you where we talk about employment related stuff and like running a facility. I think that'd be okay. like a great conversation to be like more specific about. I also am removed from that. It's yeah. not what I do. So it'd be interesting to get your feedback right. on that. So you're on Instagram and TikTok, correct? Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure that there. those are uh, put down below. Um, listen, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast with Monica Garza and I. Um, Monica will do this again soon, and I appreciate you. Hold on just one second while I shut this down. Uh, you yes, guys sir. can uh, check you. out the other podcasts here on the YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, Robert Gardner Wellness. A lot of different people I bring on uh, various perspectives, and I appreciate you paying attention. I got fired.